Hi guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial in this video tutorial series where we are implementing JWT refresh tokens. In the last video tutorial, we created our database and the required tables using an entity framework course code first methodology. Now, what we are going to do is add our first controller. So let's right click on our controller folder and add a new file and search for AMVC controller. So we will choose the option for web API controller because this controller doesn't need to have a view and therefore it's a faceless controller. So I am going to call this token controller and then I'm going to click new. We don't need this sample method so I'm going to get rid of it. And now why do we need this class? Well, in the application that we created, which we are using currently as the base application, we were using the account controller class, where which was responsible for the login method. So when the user logged in, the JWT token was created and then sent to the user while sending the response. But for now, what we are going to do is we are going to separately handle the creation of JWT and refresh tokens. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and create the required properties that we need to be instantiated in the constructor of our token controller. So let's do that. So using dependency ingestion, we are going to inject the following classes and properties so first thing that we want to do is we need a user manager property which is going to be for our application user if we go to the account controller class and if you look at the user manager property that we initialized here it was using the identity user since we have updated the identity user which means we have an application user now which is inheriting from identity users so we also want to take into consideration the additional properties that we created therefore we are going to use the application user not the identity user and let's add the missing reference the second property that is needed is to inject the app settings class or the app settings uh, class that contains the properties that we need to access from app settings so we had created this in the helpers folder where we had the required properties that we wanted to access in our app settings class since we couldn't access it directly we had created this class which would help us to access those properties so we need to inject that as well inside our token controller then the token model itself so Add the missing reference for app settings and the token model and finally we need to inject the application DB context class which will help us to communicate with the database now to use them we have to instantiate these properties in the constructor of our class so let's create a constructor and our constructor will have the following properties as the parameter so we have the user manager and here in order to access the values from app settings we are going to use the interface options class provided under using Microsoft extension options so why we are using this class because it is recommended by Microsoft that we directly don't access the values from the app settings instead we use the interface to access the information from the app settings file so we will use the interface options here next thing the token model and the application db context now let's initialize the values in the constructor or instantiate them in the constructor so here i have instantiated all the four properties and now we can use them inside the methods that we are going to create to generate the tokens 
to generate refresh tokens and the JWT token. So the first method that we are going to create is the auth method which is going to be of type HTTP post. And to access our API method, we will access it using the methods name, action methods name. Therefore, we will use the attribute action over here. So anytime somebody wants to access this method, they can access it using the domain name forward slash API forward slash controller name, which is token forward slash the action method name. So which is going to be auth. So public async task because it's an interface action result. So task returning an I action result and we will call this method as auth. And where does this method get the values? From, from a form, from a body. So we have to specify that in the parameter. So this method is going to get all the required values from body of the request. And we are going to receive an object of type token request model. So we will call it model. So all the values that we receive when the request is made to this method it will be converted to a token request model object. So it will be binded into a token request model object. In, at this point, if you find it confusing, you don't have to worry because when we set a breakpoint over here and when we test this method, you will exactly see what's happening and how the values are being binded to this object. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to write some logic inside this method. So first thing that we want to check is if we receive any invalid payload or invalid properties inside the request of token request model. So when the user sends the values or the client send the values, we will validate if these valued values that are sent are valid. So if it's not valid, we are going to send a 500 HTTP error. So let's do that by setting up an if condition. So here I'm setting an if condition which will check if the model equals to null. So if I don't receive any values and the method is being called then I'm just going to return a status code result which is 500. Next thing I want to do is I want to set a switch method here. Now, we need to check if in this switch case, what type of grant type value we received. So when the user is logging in, they will call the auth method. When the user is requesting a refresh token, they will also call the auth method. But how do we distinguish between a request for a login or a request for a JWT refresh token. So to distinguish every time we receive the request, there will be a property called as grant type. Now if the value of this property is equal to a string called as password, then we know that this is a login request because every time when the user wants to log in, they need to provide their password. If the value of this grant type is refresh underscore token, then we know that this is a request to issue a new refresh token because the user has already logged in. He's just requesting a refresh token. He doesn't want to log in again. So now we are inside the switch case we want to validate model type the grant type property and now we will validate against different cases so here are the different cases as we spoke about it 
if the case matches the password it is going to generate a new token for the user and if the case matches the if the value of this one type property is refresh token then we are going to create a refresh token but none of these cases match and we receive something else other than these values then we are going to return a unauthorized result back to the client now we are getting these two errors because we have not yet created these two methods so let's go ahead and create these methods now these methods are going to be private methods so can only be accessed by this class and by this method so if the client directly tries to access these methods they cannot access it because these methods will be private so it can only be accessed through this api call and this api call will verify if the grant type properties value is password or refresh token based on the values it will call the required method and if it's not then it will return an unauthorized result so now let's go ahead and create our first method which is generate new token so these are the two methods that we are going to code and we will code them in the next video tutorial so we will code the generate new token method and you will see how we can use it to generate new token so please like and subscribe this video tutorial and my channel and if you have any questions please use the comment section once again subscribe to our channel and if you have any questions use the comment section the code for this video tutorial and this project will be found in the video description thank you